Hello Ravens, today we're going to be breaking down weapons, and I mean stupid, simple, to super advanced. We're going to go through the data sheets, and then I'm going to share this ultimate Polymos weapon database where we have formulas set up so you can quickly figure out what is the best weapon for your situation. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data sheet real quick. Starting at the top, you've got the weapon system name. In this case, we've got a grenade launcher, then you've got its serial number. Now this can vary from the actual weapon system itself. In this case, we have two different grenade launchers one is the go chen and one is the iridium iridium um, then on the right we've got the corporation that actually sells this sometimes uh, this can have effects within the storyline so that's kind of cool um, so you might want to buy one part compared to another um, moving down to the part specs so I just want to separate these there's two different boxes here so you have AC specs and you have part specs so this is specialized with whatever that one unit you're looking at whether it's a weapon or a core or head whatever you're looking at that's going to be specifically in this window and this is just your overall build so you can always reference this and see okay how is this affecting your weapon build um, so that's one thing to keep in mind anytime you're looking at these so let's go and break down the rest of the data sheet so on the far left we'll have whatever spec we're trying to compare in the gray column we have what's currently equipped and on the far right it's the stats of whatever we're looking at potentially swapping in blue obviously means it's increasing whatever that spec is red is decreasing uh, in the center here you have a nice visual representation of how that is comparatively and so on the far left represents the lower bound the minimum of that spec uh, for whatever that um, part is and then the top end is also the max so let's take this blast radius as an example we currently equipped at 15 so that's right here obviously you can have blast radius of zero so there's the zero and then right now we're looking at something for 60 so it's about three quarters of the way so we're looking at probably a hundred for a blast maximum blast radius so that's kind of how the whole data sheet looks we're moving on to attack power i mean we're trying to build a mecha destruction you want a good attack power for whatever weapon system that is or, or weapon class uh, and so in this case we're looking at the iridium uh, that has a 960 attack power if we look back at our other grenade launcher that goes up to 1250 hey that makes this one better right who knows? There are so many other things to consider. But another thing about attack power, um, you know, that's how much that's the base damage it could do to an opponent with zero defense. Now, uh, what will happen is whatever the weapon type it is, so this is explosive, you'll have to consider the enemy's anti-explosive defense. And then that'll be a flat reduction off of that attack power. And then you have what actually gets transferred to their health. Um, next item we have is impact. This is what builds up the stagger bar above their health. That yellow bar that turns red once they get staggered. Um, it stuns them. It gives you direct hit damage multiplier. Um, it's really important to build up your opponent's stagger bar. So that's one thing that's really cool there. And so that is the base impact. Now there's a huge difference between a cumulative and base impact. So a cumulative always has a reduction. So in this case, we're looking at from 1450 all the way down to 1160, which isn't actually that big comparatively to some others. And we'll, we'll go through the data sheet in a little bit. But next we have blast radius. This is specific to any explosive weapons. Uh, and it just means how much damage it's going to do in an area. Now we'll move to a different screen. We'll check out the machine gun, the Ludlow. Um, right here you can see the next spec we're going to talk about, which is the direct hit adjustment. This is a huge number um, when you talk about impact. Uh, this is the multiplier your damage will do based on uh, your base attack power. So in this case, it's 36. You'll then multiply that by 1.95, and that's how much stagger it'll do to a uh, unit with no resistances and you have no OS tuning. So that's what you're looking to be looking at there. Next, we have a recoil. Um, right now, you can see this is five. Earlier, it was 90, which is the Iridian, I believe. Uh, maybe not. Uh, it's a different weapon system, but this one has 88, um, and that's going to be how long you're like stuck doing an attack animation, I believe. So that that's what recoil is. Then we have effective range. This is only for certain weapons. That's why I pulled up the machine gun. Um, you have to be within a certain range, or else it'll ricochet. And uh, that that's a little speculative, but I think that's exactly how the recoil system is working, or the ricochet um, system is working. You have to be, for certain weapons, you have to be within their effective range or it'll just bounce off. So definitely keep that in mind. Whatever that effective range is, you want to be there. Uh, next is range limit. This is the furthest point that you can actually still lock on. It doesn't mean you're going to land your shots. In fact, if you uh, watch our, our HUD video here, uh, you'll be able to see that the, the, the crosshair will actually stay off. It'll be white and it will not be on your target. You'll miss a whole bunch so you have to be within uh you know close to the effective range and have an fcs chip that will optimize with whatever the range limit is so that's definitely something you want to consider 
Next is we have rapid fire. So what this is, is how many rounds it does per second. So in this case, this shoots 10 rounds per second. And this has a pretty wide range, ranging from 20 to like 0.7 or something um, really, really slow. So that's what that is. We have magazine rounds. Obviously, that's how many rounds are in there. So this shoots 10 rounds per second. You can empty a mag in, in three seconds. So uh, in 30 times 36 is a decent amount of damage, and especially if they're staggered. You can do some cool things there. Um, total rounds is just how many you'll have for that full mission or PvP match. Um, uh, next we have is reload time. Obviously very intuitive there, how long it takes to reload. And then ammo cost is how much it costs per unit. Uh, we also have weight, which is just how much weight it is. And you have to consider uh, what legs and what arms you are carrying, because those can impact uh, if you can actually carry this weapon. You have to make sure that you have uh, legs and arms that can support that. And then EN load is your energy load. Same kind of thing, except based on your generator. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the energy, heat, and charged weapons. As you can see, the part spec list starts to get really full at this point. There's a lot of stuff. What, white bars now? Uh, don't worry, we're going to break it all down right now. I do want to mention there's a big difference between most kinetic and explosive weapons versus energy and heat weapons. They, the energy and heat weapons do not have a magazine. Instead, they have this heat buildup mechanic where every time they shoot, they're going to build up some heat up to 1,000. There's a 1,000 heat capacity. And you can see that stat right here. That's the attack heat buildup. And in this case, for the laser rifle, it's 160. So you'll be able to get, what, uh, six, seven shots off before it reaches 1,000. Then it has to cool off. And if you do reach max capacity, it has an extra second it has to cool off and then otherwise it's going to go based on its cooling stat down here and that's 413 per second um, so in that case uh, it would have that one second cool off and then it'd be like two and a half seconds so you're looking at a full three and a half seconds of it cooling off and if you compare that to a lot of the reload um, timers that's pretty center of the range so we've gone over the heat and overheat mechanics let's go and jump into the charged weapon i find this really fascinating uh, starting with charge time or just charge mechanic uh, to fire these charged rounds you need to be able to hold that button for an amount of time in this case it's 1.6 uh, on the hud it'll it'll charge a yellow bar a thin yellow bar that will then flash once it's primed once you reach that prime state then you release it when you're ready to fire and if you can land that shot it can do some devastating damage so if we look at the charge attack power up here it is 1222 damage we compare that to the base attack damage at 256 that's like a four five x uh, damage right there so it's substantial uh, and, and you can really do some good damage there so um, and, and if we compare that to the ammo consumption here down to three uh, you're actually saving rounds you're, you're getting more damage per round by doing that so on longer missions or pvp for dps that could be beneficial especially when you compare uh, the rate of fires when 1.7 so it's a little bit slower um, so that's definitely a, a good benefit uh, to consider when you're using charge rounds but you are vulnerable for that 1.6 seconds trying to charge it if we compare that with the impact the impact it's 500 so that's 5x also the charge cumulative impact also increases and adversely the charge heat buildup also increases it goes from 160 to 660 so this means it'll be up to 660 after you release it and then you have two more rounds that'll be at what 980 um 920 so then you need to wait uh, for it to cool off a little bit if you shoot that third round you're going to get that extra second of heating um, overheat cool off so definitely don't shoot that three times after you do a charge attack and you'll be good to go um, there is another stat down here charged en load i'm be honest i don't fully understand what that does yet uh, if you know feel free to uh, comment below but i believe i'll speculate a little bit uh, that that is what is um, when you're in a charge state it's just going to apply that extra to your boost bar maybe slows down i haven't seen that in any of the footage i've seen so really don't know but we're going to jump into the next thing next topic which is uh, the pile bunker it has another one um, that i don't fully understand either and this is pa interference which i think stands for pulse armor interference um so if you're attacking any unit that has pulse armor and you use this it has additional damage or additional stagger uh we definitely saw this in the bubble gun during the missile fights uh that one also has pa interference and a lot of the other melee weapons have it as well uh, and then also just on the arms if we're talking about for weapons there's also firearm specialization i think this works with your effective range and range limit to make sure that your uh your shots land well and they don't ricochet that that's what my speculation is i don't fully understand it um if you look back in old uh, armor core games this was actually divided into other stats so uh, i'm very curious how it looks and maybe once we have an advanced screen of the arms we can really you know figure out what this stands for 
All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the Polomo's weapon database. Uh, this is, you know, our, our G sheet that's available for everyone. It's actually an Excel sheet. If you download it, I would suggest then converting it to a G sheet uh, for formatting sake. It'll still be a little bit messed up because you're downloading and then converting it, or, or you can try and, and reformat it as an Excel sheet. I will be updating this regularly, uh, probably by chapter as I progress. I'll be smashing the, like 60 to 100 hours right off the back. So hopefully I'll have this fully filled out with every weapon possible uh, ASAP. Um, but I also just want to give a huge shout out to the, to the community and everyone. In our last video, I gave you the mission to give us 200 likes and then I'd share it early. I did that in 12 hours. Uh, incredible. Thank you guys so much. It really means a lot. I think we're at like roughly 400 likes now. Um, you know, that was my, my first big video popping on this channel. So uh, thanks again for all that. Look forward to playing with you guys. So let's go and jump into it now. We got the weapon column here. So if you click there, you'll be able to go uh, by A to Z. Uh, I also put all the numbers for the different we uh, weapon systems that have like a multi-shot thing, like burst rifles, missile launchers. So you can kind of see what that number is up here. And then otherwise it goes A to Z down the rest of the way. Serial numbers, so you can differentiate if like, let's take a grenade launcher. It's got the Iridian and the Go Chen. So you can compare those side by side and see how they compare down the line. Part location, obviously it's helpful to know if this is left arm only, right arm, or interchangeable. Then we go to the attack power per round. Uh, I wanted to break down this for the, the burst kind of weapons, the missiles, uh, so you can just see what is doing damage there. Uh, you can see that the pile bunker does a lot, and I mean to highlight the most damage thing right here, but obviously I updated this recently and haven't got to that. Um, and I will try to keep up with that as, as I, I do the chapters, but moving on to total attack power per fire so if you launch a missile barrage this calculates the total barrage uh, so that's like a thousand so for 10 it just 10x that um, and chain guns just one per one so that's how that works damage per reload will then take any of that for the case of this missile launcher it's the same but for the burst rifle uh, you know it's going to have a lot more um, rounds than just those three round burst so it'll finish off that clip that magazine and then that's how much damage you do per reload then I try to calculate the damage per second per reload cycle. So this will also take into effect, okay, how long did it take you to discharge that full clip and how long did it take you to reload or cool down if it has an overheat mechanic? So I had to do some estimations there, but it is just basically uh, that, that reload time or um, taking the cooling and then figuring out what would be an estimate of how long it would take it to cool down and then the time to empty that magazine. And so that's where we get the, the DPS per uh, reload cycle. And you'll find that the laser shotgun is incredibly slow. It's like 0 0.07 reload speed, um, and it has a pretty large clip size. So it takes a lot, and it just doesn't do that much damage. Um, so that's one that's, you know, your DPS is not great. So, um, and obviously I'm not taking into account any of the charged ones. Uh, charges down here, I haven't fully... F um, filled out that sheet. Uh, it's been a lot of work to get this done, um, but uh, I will try to get that eventually because I am I want to know that data. But if you want to look at, at DPS, uh, the plasma rifle actually does a, a significant amount of DPS. So that, that's one that's really good. We get the pile bunker, obviously. So those are some cool weapons to check out as you go through. Then we have uh, damage hit, uh, direct damage, and this is per round. So this is, you know, taking the multiplier that I was mentioning earlier, and I'm also, you can also add OS tuning. So if we go to that column real quick, uh, you can see you have the direct hit adjustment, and then you also have the OS tuning upgrades. So you could uh, either do the 0 0.5, 0 0.1, or 0.15. That's what I've seen in the OS tuning so far. And so whatever you have equipped, you could just copy or, or rechange this number, and then it'll give you a better approximation of how much damage you do obviously that's not taking into account any resistances so this would be the base damage this is doing but if we sort this you can see that you can do some crazy damage with the laser blade that one has a significant one because of its uh, direct uh, damage multiplier is pretty significant it's a 1.95 right here so that one does do quite a bit so that's one that's really cool all right, so now we've covered the direct hit damage per round. Let's talk about the total damage you could do during a whole stagger. Uh, so in this case, I'm taking three seconds as being the baseline um, because in, in my research, I'm finding that our, our armor cores, or if you're doing PvP, I think we're staggered for three seconds. I think that's what the base is. I think there are some uh, stats. I think it's um, at, attitude control uh, that can get you out of that sooner or faster. Uh, not 100% sure. But with that being said, I did try to make it so that you could figure out, okay, what is the... 
um, stagger per the three seconds and you can see that the laser shotgun uh, if it was totally ready to go it only do 239 damage over that three seconds whereas the laser blade can do a lot more um, obviously this is an average um, kind of estimate over I think I just divided the reload cycle damage uh, over the three seconds so it's not entirely sure times the multiplier but yeah so there's that um, but moving on to impact uh, so this is trying to figure out okay what weapons are best at building up impact uh, there's some really cool stuff here so you've got the pulse gun which does like basically no impact at all and then you can look at the grenade launcher that go chin they go pop off and do some serious uh, impact uh, you can then compare that to the in the accumulative uh, obviously some of these have huge drop-offs and I really wanted to share um, that um, specifically in a ratio form so you could see um, like this one is the a bazooka has really really good it, it only drops off 17 percent compared to the laser blade i believe or the, or the burst rifle uh, and then the pulse blades right above it with 73 percent drop off so those weapons are really not good at accumulating stagger after the fact so there's that um for any weapons that multi-shot uh this was kind of a calculation for my original thesis of stagger which i'm I'm just not 100% sure, so we're going to skip that column for now. Uh, we didn't have the flat accumulative impact reduction for rounds, so this is just the flat uh, reduction, just subtracting these two, so you can also just see what has the biggest drop-offs. Uh, the pulse blade and the laser blade have huge drop-offs from their regular impact to their accumulative, so just keep those in mind. Um, let's go and move on. We've got the direct hit adjustment. I already kind of um, talked about that earlier, but you can see that some have like a really small, only 1.25. So they're really not, that's the plasma missile launchers. They're not really good at, at being used once that unit's already staggered. Um, we have the 2.25 right here. I think it's a handgun. Yep, handgun looking good right there. Um, this was just estimated uh, based off of the laser blade. I try to put notes where I can if I don't have um, an answer or if I'm making more hypothesis or, or theories. So make sure you check all those comments as you go through. And everything in here, I'm just going to put a disclaimer, is still under development. I, I, put, I put a nice little note right here that says that too. Uh, there could be some incorrect data and some of my mechanics might be incorrect. So don't take this word as concrete evidence until I've had my hands on the game and I start playing through. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, effective range. So this is kind of interesting. There's an effective range and there's a range limit. And some of these are actually really quite interesting because the effective range of a handgun's 172, but the shotgun has a higher range. And so that doesn't quite make sense to me because um, you, I, I would imagine that the handgun would have a higher range. And there's some other really weird ones, uh, especially if you go into range limit, where like a, uh, what is it, like, I think it's a shotgun. There's a shotgun down here, two shotguns that are higher than the plasma rifle. So um, very curious how some of that stuff's going to work. Um, and then once you you know incorporate your FCS, uh, I think you're going to be trying to make sure that your FCS is working with the effective range. So uh, from what I've seen is the short range FCS is 0 to 130. The medium range is 130 to 230 or 230, somewhere around those range. And then long range would be anything after that. I don't know. So we'll have to see and play around with that. It's very interesting that even the laser cannon uh, has the effective range of 359. Everything out of that didn't have an effective range. So kind of interesting to consider there as well. But we'll go ahead and move on to the um, rapid fire. I've already talked about that a couple times. But uh, yeah, I did mention laser shotgun uh, is only 0 0.8. Sorry, not 0 0.7. Um, so very, very slow at being able to get it out. Max is the, the pulse gun and the Gatling gun. That's literally 20 rounds per second. That's actually incredibly fast. I, I didn't realize how fast that was until I slowed down that uh, uh, Gatling gun uh, scene. Very, very fast. Um, you have rounds per mag. It's not very useful information, but used it for calculations. Total rounds is quite interesting. So then I started taking the total rounds, uh, finding the ammunition per cost so that I could calculate the total ammo cost per mission or per supply so then you can kind of start figuring out okay what is the best use case if you're trying to do a longer mission and you're just trying to survive or trying to be most uh efficient with your money uh, obviously in the older armor cores if you played it can be you can go into debt pretty quick uh if you don't do things right so yes yeah, so then we can figure out the total ammo cost uh then i wanted to learn about the total damage per supply figuring out what it, what weapons would be the best for like a very long mission where you just need lots of damage um the plasma rifle really sh stands out at 120,000 damage overall so that's really good for very long missions will help cut through everything uh the pulse 
laser rifle is the worst uh, obviously you do have melees which are infinite unlimited so those are even better uh, but you have to be kind of close for those so definitely think about that i also did total stagger per supply that was more of a for my meme stagger build so now we can jump into some other fun stats here we got damage per cost and this is per round um and so i made sure that that was all set up properly um and so if we compare this you'll be able to see some things like the plasma missile launcher is not economical so you really should only be bringing that into a fight if it has a specific use case and really good at what you're trying to do otherwise it just doesn't do a lot of damage now this one does have an aoe so maybe in, in like a, a, a battle where there's a whole bunch of small little guys, you launch those missile launchers, it does a whole bunch of damage. Maybe it could be a lot more efficient there. Um, then if we compare on the other side, we have the dual missile launcher, which is the most economical, uh, 3.49 damage per credit. So uh, if you're trying to, to build up a huge stockpile in the treasury so you can just buy anything late game, that's what you want to try and use early game to, to build up that stockpile. Uh, we have then the stagger damage per round. So now this is if, you know, just calculating how much um, damage it does per co per credit um, when the unit is staggered. And so the bazooka, definitely the best. So if you have a, a mission where you're having to do a lot of stagger, every unit is like kind of like a mid-sized to boss level uh, unit that you're always having to stagger before you can kill. Bringing a bazooka to that, that battle would probably be a lot better than maybe even the missile launcher. But the missile launcher is like top three. So it's the, maybe that's a good shoulder. You have the bazooka on your arm uh, and you're good to go for that. We have just general impact per cost. Once again, the bazooka is going to be down there because it's really good. Plasma missile launcher. Just, I, I, I'm, I'm very curious when I'll use that. Um, unless it's like just a whole bunch of small units, then just spray and pray and let the AOE just destroy them. And then we also have a cumulative impact, which doesn't change much at all um, based on just these red and green. But there's actually a lot that's changing in the middle because of those ratios of how big that drop off is in cumulative. Uh, I might actually go through here and try and set up a gradient so it goes from like red to green and you can really see all the different colors. So it's very visually appealing. Um, I just I need to just Google how to do that. I'm sure it's quite easy, but just haven't done it yet. But um, we also have a couple other uh, columns just uh, you can sort through. We have reload times the weight, uh, EN load, and then recoil. Um, that, that's everything that we have on the general sheet. Uh, we also have a couple notes down here. Uh, if you ever just want to see how I kind of came to some of my conclusions, like the accumulative impact versus regular impact, um, I'm still trying to figure out the exact specifics on that um, because maybe this is not right. There is a, a, a potential different way this is being calculated. So, uh, but feel free to look over how I did that calculation. Here's my, my stagger build from last time. Uh, we'll see if it, if it holds the, the test when I when I play with it on the Juggernaut boss. I'll definitely be trying it. Um, and then understanding the direct hit and how I kind of came up with those calculations of how the, the multiplier works. Um, I'll probably add some other stuff in here as well um, as time goes on. But yeah, I, I'm really excited to, to get in the game. Uh, I want to once again just say how grateful I am to be here playing with you guys. And if you like this video, uh, give it a like. And otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.